Welcome back guys to Mass Effect with just a couple more side quests between us and Vermeer. We're very much poised to start seeing the end game of the game, even though we've got half the story to go in fact. So let's get going and find out what exactly has happened to this excavation site. Right then, different terrain to fight in for once. It's funny how I've not really ever got to use my sniper anymore. The open terrain is just not here. Everywhere we go, it's an enclosed kind of space. It's not being conducive for actually using our class as we wanted to. Thankfully though, have, after having completed the game once, having the assault rifle talent open has proved pretty good for us. And why are there husks? Why husks? This is not good. I missed you. You guys will get that guy yet, sure. Cool. Oh, missed. They're coming around here. I've seen this before. Machine cultists. The survey team must have unearthed some alien technology that turned them into mindless fanatics. Whatever they found, it's long gone now. But all the same, there may be machine cultists, but this is the exact same thing the sarah has been doing with the Geth. Is there any way to find... Ah, it's this. Can I get rid? Or is that all? Missing survey team. We still got to explore it, so there's still more to find. What exactly are we looking for? That's what I want to know. We did kill the entire dig, it seems like. We're very friendly people like that, after all. All right, locked door over here. I'm getting rid of that. Oh, maybe not. I don't want no explosive devices near me. This door's locked. Oh! Oh, not locked no longer! No, 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 not locked. What is going on? That accounts for all the exogeny... Oh, not exogeny again. Survey team, they were converted to cybernetic husks by devices similar to those used by the Geth on Eden Prime, as I said. How they came to be buried on a frontier world so far from Geth territory is a mystery, however. I was expecting them to come from the left and the right. The right, maybe. Bagman Tagman is exactly what we did. Except there's nothing really to tag. They're all robotic kind of creations now. And they... What did they do, I wonder? We know how the other guys have been turned into get, uh, the husks by the Geth. And they were literally carried and stuck on one of these harpoons that went through their bodies. So you're telling me that there was no Geth presence here. So these guys willingly got on top of the spikes and activated them to send them through their bodies. Why? Why? I know there's like cults in real life that uh, believe that if they kill themselves at a certain time then an alien spaceship will catch them up using some kind of... or pick their, pick their souls up using some kind of poison to enable themselves to do it. Su back massive like odd crazy suicide cults and but still it's like wow what kind of baffling personality disorder do you really have to have in order to be willing to sacrifice your life for something so absolutely random and I was about to say without proof but at least these machine cultists had some kind of proof that something was going on because they definitely turned into husks after all But in real life it goes on and it's just like baffling. Really? Like there's 50 people that are honestly weird enough to believe that if they take this poison and all kill themselves in one room that they'll be taken away on a spaceship and given a new alien body or whatnot. It's like how gullible do you have to be to be taken in by whoever cult leader is whatnot. And we know that most of the time those people are going to have something wrong with them in some way or another. Some uh, A wire loose here, a screw loose there, but still. It's just a bit crazy. There's no other way to put it. Why are people so willing to give up their free will? 
There are some people that really do want to be slaves to something, like an organization or this or that, rather than just decide on things for themselves. I mean, sure, if you want to decide on for yourself that you want to be part of something, that's great, that's fine, but don't just sacrifice your free will when you're in it. If you decide you want to be part of it, still keep your free will and your skepticism and everything towards it. If you start believing that everything is cut and dry just because it's written somewhere or someone said something, then there's something wrong. It's nice to be trusting, but honest to God, if you're just too trusting, then you're just going to be made a fool out of throughout your entire life. Oh, so what's going on here? Loads of probes. Another transmitted tower. Are these bringing the probes down in this area or something? Let's deactivate it and find out. This device is transmitting tight beam signals into geosynchronous orbit. It disrupts the survey team's GPS satellites, causing them to crash nearby. So all we've done is disabled it. Nothing else but that. You see the debris over here, but that's nothing that we're that interested in. So that ends this planet. What? Why would they want to bring down all their satellites and stuff? I don't really understand this planet. I think we'll just leave and move on. So that should leave us with just the one more action-based side quest. So let us move on with all due haste. Where is it next we're heading? Assignments? Only f this many left? Valuable materials? Oh, we've got rare earths, that's cool. Strange transmission, locate signs of battle, is another collector's one. And Comrade Werner, which we'll probably visit again at some point in time during this Let's Play. Well, that leaves us with just this assignment, the strange transmission in the Sentry System, the Hawking Eta Cluster, the strange biotic commune that was well, found at the very, very start. How many episodes has it been since we found this message to when we've actually gone there? Hawking Eta it is. Though now I can't remember the planet system, which is probably a big mistake. Right, Hawking Eta is somewhere over here, yes? No. No. Yes, it was. And there's just the one system in the Hawking Eta, which is cool. That very much narrows down our search. Our jaunt through space is nearly over. Message coming in, Commander. Big surprise, the Alliance needs you again. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett with Alliance Command. We've got a mission for you. An Alliance officer named Major Kyle has set up a small compound in the Hulking Eta Cluster. He's attracted a number of followers, mostly biotics. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, Shepard. What kind of proof do you have that the Major is dangerous? Three days ago, we sent two Alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. That compound is a cult, Shepard. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. I might be able to end this without violence. That may not be possible, Commander. We don't want a bloodbath, but Kyle is dangerous. I'll trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. We we'll use our judgment indeed, but a leader of a cult again? Kind of it. Oh, a known signal. Metallic asteroid, I'll take whatever you own. I will rape you of your minerals and all that jazz. Palladium. Just like we every day, or oh, Cobalt, reap the earth of its natural resources and all that. So we got Press Pop here, which is actually where we're going. And Clendagon. Which isn't even surveillable. The moon is habitable, the planet not. Well, that's why I imagine it is. Tamahira is not surveillable or anything. And that's that. We've already checked Cantra, haven't we? That's where we got our Cobalt. So down we go. No, we didn't check Farotopo, did we? Ah, Faropto even. A League of One Medallion, good, we only need three more of them. 
So let's head to the moon. Press Rob and D, let's go. So let's go take out the cult of Jeremy Kyle. If you're British, you'll know exactly who he is and exactly that he needs dealing with. He's just as bad as everyone he deals with, that man. Let's check out where we're heading. We got anomalies right next to us. In fact, on our way, we don't need the debris, of course, but we'll take that. In fact, there's an extra anomaly over here, so let's go check that out. Is it on top? Or no, it's on top. I thought I would be able to reach it easily. In fact, it's probably just on that ledge by the look of it. Maybe, if, no, it's probably just up there, yeah. Oh no, it's actually going to be over the other side. Let's climb up as slowly as humanly possible. Press the mountain. No! I'm so close. Can I do it sideways? I doubt very much, Lee. Come on, you can nearly make it. No! Okay, that's not the way to go. That's just fucking down. Oh well. We can go up this way round. When I kill him, I'm going to tell him that this is for all this trashy daytime TV that's terrible. I hate it. Ooh! Discovery, this cluster of prefab utility shacks have a distinct ramshackle look to them. A set of rover treks led, led away over the mountain ridge to the southwest. Interesting. What, what way? Is that going to mark on the map where the next location is? Or do we, are we supposed to go never eat shredded wheat? Southwest is this away. So if we keep heading towards that anomaly, it seems that they're joined up in some way or another. And yes, I always do the never eat shredded wheat thing when uh, looking at my compass points. It's not exactly hard to remember north, east, south and west in the directions they're in, but me, however, always creature of habit. There's something down there as well, we'll have the technician's kit. Excuse me, Garrus. If only we could see the actual rover tracks. The southwest, it says, which is more or less up here and around the corner. So I think it's leading us to that anomaly. In fact, there's more than one anomaly there. There's at least two while I look at it. So what's going on? It seems we're going to have to go down into a massive ravine. What's that? Oh well, the only way we'll find now is to head it over to it. Look to me a bit geth-like, but... Obviously not. It's a marker of some sort. Ancient debris. And a dead body. Wrecked mining vehicle. Lots of dead bodies. The front of the rover is crumpled in from impact. A glance inside tells you the occupants, probably a team of illegal wildcat miners, are dead. Debris is still sliding down the furrows left by its tires, silent in the near vacuum atmosphere. So they were trying to mine this, probably. In fact, that's probably where the marker's here. But messed up when they did it. Turian Insignia, we've already got all of them anyway, so that's fine. Is that really what they were here to look for? I guess it was. Right, so next on the list, of course, is all the way down here. Let's get on our way. Uh, uh. I hate terrain like this, it's terrible. It's where I changed the Mako's name to the Vomit bu Bucket version 2. We can dodge the probe over there, it's nothing really interesting. 
we get enough weapon bits from just killing people. Alright, so is it on top of the mountain or around the side? I'd imagine it'd be around the side of the mountain. Uh, if the camera angle doesn't just completely die from my bouncing around. Here we are. So, time to meet with Jeremy Kyle as he films his horrible, horrible, trashy TV show. What are the point? Time to grab the rocks that are nearby. No guards on the outside. In fact, where are we heading? Inside there or inside there? It looks like we're trying to head down, but it's locked, so gold! Come on, cultists, you can't be enjoying TV that much and not realise there's money here! Money! Right, thank you! I think we've already got all the heavy metals after all, is it rare earths? Either way, I'm happy. So we need to go down to the right hand side, it seems, but that's locked. So maybe there's a way to open it in here. Securing point. Let's go, guys. This is a private sanctuary. Outsiders are not welcome here. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. I want this to end peacefully. If he doesn't see me, people could get hurt. We won't let you take Father Kyle away. He protects us. We need him. The Alliance wants someone to pay for those murders. Let me speak to Major Kyle and maybe I can find some way to help you all get out of this alive. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Okay then. It's always helpful when you friend someone's life. That's for sure. Gets people really talking in the mood for conversation. So what's going on, Father Kyle? Hello, cultist. We're gonna do this peacefully, yes? Father Kyle says we biotics have to stick together. Not by literally walking into each other. The Alliance wants to wipe us out. Father Kyle told us. We're fine with you, biotics. It's Caden, we love him. He is our token non-irritating human. Ashley is our token racist. If you try to take Father Kyle away from us, you'll end up like those other Alliance soldiers. So where is he exactly? He's probably in the furthest rooms. Oh, I'll take your stuff in the meantime. Oh, you don't mind. We all know that in any RPG, everything belongs to the protagonist anyway. So, Father Carl, how can we deal with this in a nice, safe manner? Where you don't kill me? Or what's the point, I don't kill you? I am Major Kyle. I know why you've come. We have no quarrel with you. Why can't you just leave us alone? What happened to those other Alliance officers? The ones who came before me? They wanted to take me away from here. They wanted me to abandon this place, turn my back on my family. They spoke blasphemy. I did what I could to make their end quick and painless. I had no other choice. It was necessary to protect my children. Only I can keep them safe. The Alliance sent me to bring you in, Major. Can't you see this has gotten out of hand? Don't you understand you are endangering your followers? I respect that you have come under a banner of peace, but I cannot do as you ask. If you take away their father, my children will be helpless. You ordered your followers to kill those Alliance investigators. You must face the consequences of your actions. Do you really want your children to suffer for your sins too? No, this, this was my fault. My children are innocent, pure. Please, I never meant for this to happen. I, I'm sorry. You're doing the right thing, Major. Your children will be better off for it. Come on. Wait, if my children see you taking me away, they won't understand. They will attack and you will be forced to kill them all. You have shown me the error of my ways, Commander. Now you must give me time to explain it to them. It is the only way they will understand. Please, give me one hour. 
After that, I will meet the Alliance authorities at the gates of my compound and surrender without violence. I give you my word. I guess the only thing we have to do is believe him. Either way, if he doesn't, if he kind of like, renages, renegs, I don't know how to actually say that word. That's so many things I don't know how to pronounce properly, if you know. Uh, if, we, if he doesn't go through with our deal, we just walk in and kill him. So, either way. I'm going to trust you. If you betray that trust, you and all your children will suffer. I will not betray you, Commander. Thank you for this. Your pilot can have an Alliance Command Patrol pick Major Kyle up. I just hope you know what you're doing, Shepard. You should return to the Normandy and notify the Alliance of Kyle's surrender. They'll want to dispatch a ship to take him into custody. Father Kyle. Ended peacefully, and Hackett thought I couldn't do it. No, we're not scared of you because you've had stuff stuck in your head. We're scared of you because you're crazy enough to believe in this kind of cult site thing. That's enough to make anyone scary. Trust me, there are a lot of things that scare me about people believing in things that are... random. And not seeing any, like, there's no argument with them. It's like, ah. But I better not go down that subject road. As long as people aren't tempered by their beliefs and are still people, at the end of it, I'm quite happy. But anyway, back to the Normandy. So, what exactly will we get from Admiral Hacker this time? Message coming in. Patching it through. Admiral Hackett here, Commander. Your helmsman just forwarded your report on Major Kyle. We sent in a team as you instructed. Kyle's followers have disbanded, and the Major surrendered to us without incident. We'll make sure he gets the help he needs. To be honest, Shepard, I thought this thing was going to end in a bloodbath. I don't know how you did it, but you saved a lot of lives. Congratulations. It's what we tend to do, isn't it? We tend to save a hell of a lot of lives, a hell of a lot of people just by being willing to talk to them. But with the topical thing of biotics going on, maybe it'd be nice to catch up with our token biotic, our token non-annoying alliance member, and then our racist. We don't really talk to these people that much. So hello, Caden. Commander, do you have a minute? I always make time for my officers. Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for a lost mass relay to who knows where, but we can't get backup from the council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. It's funny, we finally get out here, and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Alenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid, where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or... You know, for justice. Maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in BOT. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. Is there some question about how you were exposed? My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics, a little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. 
It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I wanted to get to know you a little better, that's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome, ma'am. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? No, no I don't. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah, I'd like that. What on earth have I just done? I was about to say that Caden seems a very, very nice chap, nice buddy buddy pal, and now it seems that romantic illusions have been cast. That was accidental. There was nothing supposed to be that way. Leave me alone, Caden. Can't you see I only have eyes for one? I have eyes for no one. I'm but a poor woman out in the universe. The Normandy is my man. The Normandy and me. Facing all our fears and future together. But yes. Okay, that, that could have actually really complicated things, that, that conversation. Yes, it seems that now romantic illusions have started between the two of us. That is not a good thing. That is not what I was intending. I was intending to stay a good captain, neutral and all that. Neutral except for racists. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Commander. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It was yours. You know, you really should talk to Chisoni about her mom. She has to be hurting. Just saying, Commander. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already sweet on someone. What's up? He didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. He better not be sweet on me! Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. I was an only child, but I get the idea. At least one of my parents was always on duty. Yeah, military families, eh? With schedules like that, it's a wonder we ever have kids anymore. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like your father wasn't around much. Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at a hundred meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Your beliefs are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. I appreciate that, Skipper. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am? That's more or less what I was talking about earlier. Anyone can have their beliefs as long as it doesn't completely screw them up as a person. 
Don't use it as a moral compass, use it as a kind of guiding rules and benefits. If you're a bit too zealot towards something, then things can go really wrong, people can really get screwed up. If people use things, certain things as guidance, like the Ten Commandments, and just use them as the, the best basis, but don't think of them as like a completely and utterly rigid structure. Completely, I mean, you don't want to kill, don't want to hurt thy neighbour or anything like that, but just take the good bits and don't add in the bad bits. So, Ashley was a little bit better in that conversation, not racist at all, Caden's getting sweet on me and it seems that Caden has someone that he's sweet on. Uh, it could be me. And I could have got myself in trouble. So I'll see you for this episode and we'll head to Verma next one. Thank you guys for watching, tune in for more Mass Effect, and I'll see you guys around. Bye bye.